Hello. 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 <laughs> Hi. I'm Hola. So We're just trying to find something new to say. Anyways, we are excited because A War of Two Queens by Jennifer L. Armitrout is coming in a little over a week. And we're so excited. We've been just like dying. It's she to us, Jennifer R. Sorry, Jennifer L. Armentrout is just like Sarah J. Moss. Yeah. We love these two authors. And we love From Blood and Ash series. And and we love Castile. Oh, and Kieran. Oh, Castile. And Poppy. Oh. We are so excited. So this is our second of couples. And we are gonna be doing who? 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 Castile, Castile and, and Poppy. Poppy. Penelope. Or Castile slash Hawk. Yes. Wait, is it Hawk? Hawk. Hawk. Yes, Hawk. <laughs> That's right. And it's been a while. So anyways, we decided let's get on to this one and kind of delve into who they are, couple, everything, because we got to remember, we, this starts to help refresh our memory, and then we will be doing a recap on the series as well coming up. So I wanted to start, I got this all from Wiki Fandom, just makes it easy. You guys can go on and look at it yourself, but if you don't want to, you can listen to us and we will talk about these two people. You can, you know, clean, you can yes. um, work just while to listening recap. to us. Just to remember who these brilliant people are. Okay, so Penelope, which I used to call Penelope. her Penelope. It's not Penelope? It's No, it's Penelope. When, listen, I used to call her Penelope, but when I listened to it on audio, it was Penelope. Penelope. I don't know. Unless she said it wrong. She said Penelope it wrong. Penelope Belfort. It's Penelope. Dinner. It's Poppy. Well, yeah, you could still be Poppy. No. But she called her Penelope. I Now I feel like I'm saying it wrong. Penelope. <laughs> it's, it's Poppy. No. It doesn't matter if she's known as Poppy. Okay? So, anyways, I used to call her Penelope too. Okay, so she is known as Penelope. That really bothered Balfour me. Balfour de Nier. <laughs> um, is known as Poppy, Princess by Castile. You know, he always has his little, okay, Princess. Pen by Ryland. Oh, poor Ryland. Mm -hmm. Your Highness. I always say this wrong. Maya, Laisa. Maya, Laisa. Lisa. By the Wolven. Lisa, by the Wolven. My Queen, Castile. Harbinger, I do I say that wrong? Harbinger, 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 Harbinger. <laughs> not know. hair, Har whatever. Bringer of death and destruction. Her titles are Maiden, the Chosen One, Second Daughter, Princess of Atlantia, Queen of Atlantia, which right is, she's rightfully, and Queen of Flesh and Fire. Her species is a goddess, which we find out. Yep. So, her powers and abilities. Empathy. Poppy is gifted with the power of empathy, allowing her to reach out and feel emotions in people. The most prominent is pain, which she's learned to sense the earliest. Remember, from the very beginning, that was remember what she was doing with Victor. Yep. She was going and helping him, especially with if people were bitten by the craven or whatever. She was trying to, she could feel their pain and she would like help ease them. Mm -hmm. With the development. She'd always get a headache. Yes, she would. With the development of her gift, she is later able to sense a wider range of emotions. Poppy can also taste those emotions. Remember, she always like has references to what they taste like. According, oh, here we go. According to her, anger and hatred taste bitter. Love like chocolate and berries. Surprise feels like a cold splash. Fear has an acid taste and jealousy leaves behind an ashy coating at the back of her throat. This power is found in Nyctos' bloodline from his mother's side. Yep. Hillary. Oh, Hillary? <laughs> Healing. Oh, gosh. <laughs> What's wrong with us? Healing, suffering, absorption. <laughs> God, something's wrong with us. Due to her gift, Poppy is able to take away other people's pain by reaching out to them. She also possesses a certain range of healing abilities thanks to yes. this. So maybe she could take away the pain, like if they were gonna die or if they were suffering. She and wasn't it that um, in headaches? A shadow in the ember. Sarah was able to do that. Wasn't that Sarah's power? Seraphina. Seraphina. Oh God, Sarah, don't put me on the spot. I think I don't so. Because she, because I was like, oh wait, hey. Yeah, I think she did. Because she's the like of them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, her emotions. 
Poppy can amplify emotions and project it onto other people, causing unimaginable pain, which can lead to their deaths. Mm -hmm. Now that's something like as she gets more involved and in tune to things that like started to really develop. Remember, it was just like sensing pain at first and yes. emotions at first. Resurrection. Poppy can restore the soul back to the person from limbo or command the soul to stay with the body. Immortality. After being ascended by Castile, it is believed that Poppy will be immortal such like the deities. While Castile did completely drain her of blood and replaced it with his own, and Poppy awoke with bloodlust. Blood she does not seem to need blood. Her eyes remained green instead of turning black, and she did not sprout mm -hmm. fangs. Her, a weapon expert. Poppy is an expert with several kinds of weapons and apt in learning new skills. She is a very quick learner. Yeah, she and um, Victor, you know, was... He started it, but a then... A big training yes. for her in the beginning. Correct. I mean, even Castile is surprised, like, all the time, like, whoa... You know, Whenever he loved it. He was like, "Who? Yeah, princess." Remember on from Blood and Ash, he, like he's when um he saw her on the the rooftop that yeah. one time when they were being invaded, and he was like, "Oh, princess!" In her outfit, she's yeah. like a lady or whatever. He's like, I think he's like, I don't know, something like, "Be still, my heart" or something. Yeah. I don't know. Okay, her physical description: Poppy is described as a girl with medium height, fair skin, and auburn hair that resembles burnt copper. Her eyes are of emerald color. She has two scars on the left side of her face, one that goes above her eyebrow and another that extends across her cheekbone. Additionally, she retains the scars on her legs and stomach from when she was attacked by the craven. Her body type is described to, is described to be athletic, a willowy thick frame, I put thick frame. She used to wear white clo clothes fitting for a maiden and a translucent veil to cover her face. After leaving the title of Maiden Behind, Poppy dons a different type of clothing. Oh. Additionally, she starts wearing her hair down instead of an updo's. Okay, and about Poppy. Which, rightfully so. She has yeah. such beautiful hair. Yeah, she does. It's lush and it's beautiful and it's that gorgeous red mm -hmm. auburn color. About Poppy. Um, she is the former maiden or the chosen one to the kingdom of Solis and the rightful queen of Atlantia. Mm. She is the daughter of Queen Isbeth and the god Iris, mm. but is raised by Coralina and Leopold Balfour as one of their own children. Poppy grew up thinking that Ian Balfour <laughs> that is, is her odd. brother. Cora and Ian tried to escape Solis when, wait, sorry. Leopold, sorry, Cora and Leopold tried to escape Solis when Poppy was a young child. They were attacked by a craven while they were at the inn in Lockwood. Poppy is bitten by the craven but survives without turning mm -hmm. into one. Poppy and Ian are raised at the capital by Isbeth and her handmaidens. At 13, Poppy is forced to Dawn. Dawn. No. Don. You told me it was Don. It's Don. Don. That's what I said to begin with, and you said I was oh, wrong. Oh, sorry, Don. Well, Don, I think it's like the... The veil plural. of the chosen. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. You confuse my brain all the time. I confuse mine, too. While living at the Capitol, Ian teaches Poppy numerous skills, such as lock picking until he ascends. Okay, Poppy is an extremely complex person with multiple sides to her personality. I actually really like Poppy's personality. She yeah. does grow a lot, too, from the first book and on. She, she is described as feisty and compared to a viper. The extreme abuse Poppy endured from the monarchy in Solis caused her to hide parts of herself and transform them in order to restrict the amounts of abuse she would receive. Early in her character development, Poppy is mostly complacent, quiet, and unassuming. However, parts of Poppy's inner self slip out in small ways, such as sneaking out of the castle and learning combat. Remember, Victor would teach her every morning yes. and how to protect herself. And, like, she would go to help people and take away yeah. their pain and stuff. Um, so she is starting to be aware of certain things, but mm. not at all. It is with the help of Hawk that Poppy's true personality begins to break through and the fire deep inside her comes burning out. She's thoughtful, loving, strong, and fierce. She stands up for those she loves and will fight for them until her last dying breath. Poppy is quick-witted with a sarcastic sense of humor. She yearns for people to believe her and respect her as she believes in them. 
Additionally, her gift of empathy allows her to see multiple perspectives and truly understand people. It is also the reason for which Poppy often gives people the benefit of the doubt and is able to show them love and respect despite the, her difference, differences in opinion. You want me to read Castile's? It's up to you. You can do it. How long is this? Okay. Start with the name, darling. Castile Hawkthorn Hawk. Dunmere. <laughs> Got that right. I love my I love my hawk <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So he uh known as he has many different aliases. Well not really, just names. Hawk Flynn, which is his false name, but I kinda like that name. Well, it's kind of it's false, but it's also true. His yep. mother called him Hawk. The Dark One, Cass, Your Highness from Poppy. His titles And it's always Your Highness. Yeah. Like when she's mad at him. <laughs> Titles, Prince of Atlantia, His Royal Highness, King of Ash and Blood. Species, Atlantean. His powers and abilities, Compulsion. Cass is gifted with the power of compulsion, enabling him to force his will onto another if he wishes to do so. Compulsions are temporary, only useful for immediate gains. And he doesn't use it always. Like, he didn't use it with Poppy until he absolutely needed to. Mm -hmm. And I think we'll get into that. But, like, he only, he tries, like, or he yeah. learned to not do it. Yeah. He doesn't really like to. Healing. Cass has healing properties due to his blood. So whoever drinks from him will be will be absolved of any injuries. I'll drink which from that blood. we do know. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm not a big blood drinker. But yeah. him, I would be. Okay, I'll try <laughs> Weapon expert. Cass is, an, um, Cass is an expert with several kinds of weapons, which we knew. He was her guard when we first met him. Um, he's somehow wormed his way in. And um, yeah, he's a good protector. Physical description. Castile is described to be beautiful on several instances. He has dark, thick hair that curls at the nape of his neck and often falls forward, brushing equally dark brows. His cheekbones are high and wide, no surprisingly straightforward for a guard. His square jaw is firm and his mouth is well formed. When he smiles, <gasps> the right side of his lip curls up and a deep dimple appears. I love dimples. <laughs> Sometimes dimples appear on both cheeks when he is freely smiling and able to show his fangs. He possesses captivating eyes, which are a pool of gold and honey. His smell is of <laughs> just like give me spoon. His smell oh, is of I'm cinnamon, hungry. dark spices, and pine. Do you know what though? Okay, has anybody seen Euphoria? I don't know if you guys have watched that show. You know who kind of reminds me, but I mean personality-wise, no. But Nate. Mm. I don't know why, but Nate popped into my head I when I was he, reading. You know this. who he reminded me was Edward from Twilight. No. Yes, he did. He has like no. his profile or something. But He's cute. I, I, I don't think entirely, but reading this was like, oh, I Nate picked, no. popped into my head. I don't know. Maybe it's too more, it's so much more beautiful than that. No, I know, but it's still, it's like for a real person, if you're gonna like pick somebody and you see him, mm. Nate from Euphoria came into my head. I don't know why, so. but that is true. not to me. Well, who would you think of? Edward? You know who I would think of more, except for the eye color, is um, Eddie Serbian. Those deep dimples. Mm, that makes sense. I can see it. I think I could see that more. I swear. I, I guess, yeah, because Nate, Nate dimples. seems more like Edward oh. from that profile. Not like full on face, mm. just like because that kind of like profile. I didn't I see know. it, but oh, oh, to each his oh, own. Maybe, yeah. I'll take a picture <laughs> and show you. <laughs> So about Castile grew, grew up in Atlantia and was close to his brother Malik. I cannot wait for that. I know. Whole thing to go I'm down. excited. Which is soon. I know. Week. His bonded wool, woven Kieran and his best friend Shay. Kieran Contau. Contu? Contau? Contu. I don't know. C-O-N-T-O-U. <laughs> so it's still about um, Castile, about, yes. but now we're going to learn about um, Kieran and Shay's little part yes. with him. So Kieran is Castile's bond and woven. They share a brother-like relationship and are extremely close. Extremely close. Kieran is both Castile's protector and confi confident. And the one person Castile, Castile, Castile trusts to protect Poppy. 
Kieran worries about Castile a lot and can feel his pain and sickness because of their bond. During the decades of Castile's capture by the Ascended, Kieran is weakened and ill due to his bonding with Castile. That is, I remember yes. that. I thought they were so bonded that they shared the lady. Yeah. I thought that was going to come up. I, was like, I thought oh. so too. I was like, whoa. <laughs> it could still, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Shay. Which I used to call her Shia. Shia. You did. <laughs> about that s-h-e-a <laughs> i just don't know i, I never shay that. i always thought s-h-a-y i don't know why but Shia. i was like oh it's shay <laughs> so castile and shay's relationship started out as a friendship when they were young they grew closer over the years and fell in love at one point they became engaged they never shared a sexual intimate relationship as poppy and castile do they didn't I know not like, as intense. That's what he's yeah. that's what oh, okay. saying. Yeah, okay. That's what I'm saying. Intimate relationship. <laughs> yes, the, the that's intense. What it's yes. Yes. After Castile was taken prisoner by the Ascended, both Malik and Shay tried to rescue him multiple times. They finally succeeded, only for it to be revealed that Shay had bartered away Malik's life to save her own. She was captured. The unbeknownst to, I believe, I don't know if Malik was there, but I, I well, I remember Malik and I Shay got, yeah, captured a first time. I think she might have been or something like that. I read it a first time. She was, yeah, and she bartered for him, and that's how the guards were prepared for the release of Castile and to switch Malik. With yeah, Castile. and so then she, yeah. The Ascendant did not expect Malik to put up such a great fight, and Shay was able to take Castile. Castile and Shay were stopped by the Ascended, who taunted Castile with the truth regarding Shay's betrayal. Shay then attempted to trade Castile's life for her own safety, leaving Castile to kill both the Ascended and Shay with his bare hands. So, like, come on, you you went through all that work to get him out, and then you're like, oh, take him and save me. It's like, why did you even do it? Like, I get, I get it. When you're in a position, just, sometimes yeah. you get more scared and you're like, okay, no, 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 yeah. or whatever. It, 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 it's his, you could it's tell. Love. It was her love. And his you love. Know? You yeah. know, you could tell he was very hurt by it. And I mean, it does suck. And poor Castile. Castile tells Poppy that nobody betrays someone they love. Exactly. And while and while Shay had probably loved him at some point, he knew the moment she valued her own life over Cass's that she did not love him or her country anymore. He says that while he once loved her, he only feels hatred for her now. Ooh, it's a big word. And yeah, and he does feel, I do remember him saying he feels bad for killing her. He didn't want to kill her. He just, it snapped. It snapped. Yeah, he says he hated that he killed her. I do remember that. When posing as Hawk, Castile is an easygoing character with a teasy nature. He seems to be as someone, he seemed to be so, he seems to be someone easy to talk to and get along with making him more likable. He can still be serious when he wants to be. This happens when he poses as a royal guard, where he is protective of Poppy. Castile's personality is similar to that of Hawk, but where Hawk is soft and kind, Castile is extraordinarily cunning, teasing, and devious, solidifying his name as the Dark One. As a prince, Castile ex ex Exudes, 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 there it is, charm and grace, but on the same hand, assertiveness. He will go all, he will go to all lengths to remind people of his power and respect towards him, though both brutal worlds or actions. Words. Oh, sorry, words. Through both oh. brutal words. <laughs> Through both brutal words or actions, such as killing to prove a point. He can be deadly when he is the dark one. But he does not enjoy the killings, but knows them to be a necessity. And yeah, and I would say because um, he is overall still that like fun loving guy. But yeah, when he yeah. has to be, he can, I mean, he's brutal. Remember yeah. um, Jericho <laughs> and like when they went, stepped out of line, I mean, and they Even, were like um, hanging on the who wall. Who was Shay's dad? I can't remember, but he got along with Shay's dad for. Well, they never told the truth. Yeah, he kept the happened. truth of what happened to he Shay. He hurt him. Yeah, and he didn't. You know, he's letting that whatever. He's letting that go. What happened with her? He's not sharing it. But at the end, um, of the Crown of Gilded Bones, wasn't he the one to kill the dad? 
Did the dad die? He hated him. Yeah. Well, he we was will do apart. a recap. I don't know. We will do a recap. I don't know. Okay, I'll do Penelope Castile. Penelope. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the relationship between Castile and Poppy begins while he is posing as a royal guard, sworn to protect Poppy. They meet at the Red Pearl, which if you have not read the bonus Red Pearl scene by Jennifer L. Armentrout, it's amazing. You can go on our website and read it. Or I would think, I mean, unless it's not there anymore. I we have it, it on our channel Or you too. can watch our video. We did a video yeah. of what happens in it. I loved hearing Hawk's yeah. point of view. They meet at the Red Pearl where Poppy and Hawk share a kiss. Hawk gets called away by Kieran and Poppy leaves the Red Pearl. Just a short, brief summary of what happens. Go watch our video. Once Hawk is on her royal guard, they begin to develop a friendship where they understand each other. Mm -hmm. they, both have they both have lost people they care about and are both conflicted between love and duty, which is very true. I mean, you know, she has she's a chosen one, yeah. a maiden. She doesn't agree with a lot of the stuff going on. She's like, wait, you know, like with the um till uh what was his name? Tillis or Tulis, Mr. Tulis with their baby. Like she didn't agree that they were gonna take their last surviving child to yeah. you know be part of the ascended. And she was also starting to see weird things that she didn't like, but she still felt that duty like without her, they were relying on her to save, you know. Mm-hmm the people or what I can't remember everything mm -hmm. as same with him yeah um their friendship begins to become closer when they kiss under the willow tree on the castle grounds Castile kills the Duke of Macedonia in Poppy's name after learning the man abused her for years they leave Macedonia for Carcedonia and their relationship develops further when they snuggle together in the blood forest I love that scene <laughs> and have many intimate and tender moments when they arrive at the keep of New Haven, they begin to get to know each other, the, each other's lives, and soon have sex. Soon, Castile's betrayal. Now, remember that he is not the he is not who she thought him to be. Um, Hawk. I'm trying to see where I, Hawk is Atlantean. She didn't know that. She thinks they're horrible and bad. And Poppy mm -hmm. realizes that Hawk plans to hand her over to the Dark One. So he is not really Hawk. Mm -mm. Um, okay, so... But doesn't his mother... His mother calls him Hawk, right? Yeah, well, I mean... Or his close What friends. I mean is Hawk Flynn. He's yeah, not yeah, Hawk, yeah, the guard. Hawk. The, well, he's not Hawk the guard. But yes. he his nickname to his mother is Hawk. Castile's betrayal is known and Poppy is heartbroken. But Castile's claims that not everything was fake... Jericho tries to execute Poppy, and Poppy ends up getting stabbed by Mr. Tulis. Remember, he was mad at her because he thought she had something to do with their son being taken away. Actually, did they get the son out? I'm trying to remember. I think they escaped. Hawk saves her life by using compulsion for Poppy to drink his blood. When she realizes that Hawk is actually Castile... I think she over she remembers overhearing Karen say something about Cass and she realizes that wait is that his name the dark one she grabs her dagger and stabs his heart and went, runs away into the woods once Cass still catches up with her he tells her that she has forgotten that what they had is real remember he tells her right before they slept together that night like just remember this is real yeah, what I feel for you. And so he tells her, you forgot that this was real. And I think then that's when he bites her. <laughs> you forgot yeah. this is real and bites her. Um, he tells her that she had forgotten that what they had is real and that he can't be killed with a stab <laughs> to the heart. He bites her for her blood to heal. And once he is done, he states that he should have known. Remember, he picks up about her blood, that she has Atlantean blood in her. Later on, they become engaged to, for convenience so he can negotiate with the blood crown, preventing a war. She could then choose to divorce him if she wanted to. Poppy agrees as long as he agrees to help find her brother. Ever since his betrayal, they both have trouble opening up their feelings, and so they pretend not knowing that they both care for one another. Even though they are pretending, they both share several tender moments with each other and even engage in few sexual interactions. Eventually, Poppy decides and says she doesn't want to pretend anymore, which Castile agrees with, and the two have sex for the first time. Sorry, I think my kid's over there. <laughs> for the first time, um, where am I? Since New Haven in the, ca in the cavern. 
Later on, they have an argument about their relationship and the hidden truths that they keep from each other. They reconcile, though, when they both reveal their true feelings about everything in each other. Although neither of them say the words out loud, Poppy feels Castile's emotions to be that of love using her power. He proposes to her for real this time, and she accepts. They marry the same day, both content and happy now that the marriage is real between them. During the wedding, the skies turn pitch black, showing that Nyctos although sleeping, expresses approval of the marriage. Once married and Poppy is um, once married and Poppy is at Nyctos' temple, she's accused of being the ascended whore and starts getting stoned by angry Atlanteans. The sky begins to rain blood. A blood tree forms behind Poppy and she takes their hatred and turns it back on mm -hmm. them, killing all of them. Once the Wolven and Cass arrives, Poppy is terrified the Wolven are going to attack her. But when Cass sees her glowing, he draws his sword and kneels to her. The queen sees this and takes off her crown and places it on Nyctos' temple floor. The crown catches on fire and burns off the gilded bone and turns to gold again. Queen, Alor queen Alawana tells everyone to bow to the last descendant of Nyctos, the rightful queen of Atlantia. Mm -hmm. So that is Hawk. And, or Castile and Poppy's little hot Castile and Poppy's little time together. It's obviously not everything that happens in the book, but it does help give a little re a refresh, a refresher. But Since we will that is go over the books out. in one. Yes, I know. Oh, here's some quotes from um, Castile. Uh, this one's from um, A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire. I need to fill your lips on mine. I need to fill your breath in my lungs. I need to fill your life inside me. I just need you. It's an ache. This need. Can I have you? All of you. Castile. And this one is from Castile, the crown of gilded bones. And if you decide you want to take what is yours, claim the throne. I will set the entire kingdom on fire to watch it burn if that ensures that the crown sits on your head. Do not underestimate what I would or would not do to ensure your happiness. Anyway, yeah. man. man, I love them. I yeah. can't wait to get back and have more I of them. I know. This is going to be fun. I'm excited. I am too. I'm really excited. You know, we loved um, what was Nick Dose's uh, book. A Shadow um, a shadow in, in the, the Ember. Ember. I love that because I think that's going to be really fun too, getting to know more because it does kind of give more information on this, but I'm excited. And um, I know I said this from A Shadow in the Ember, Nick Nick. Nyctus? Nyctus? I know. It's more than Nyctus. The dragon Nictus. guy. I, I want a book on them. Um, yeah, I want what's to see. Little, what's um, the little girl's name? Oh, the little dragon. Well, yeah, I know it's not a dra draken. Um, I don't know. I don't know, oh, but <laughs> like Jade, Jayla or G Jade, Jade, Jadis, Jadis, Jadis. Jadis. Yes. I mean, that's it. Um, I would love a little book on that. So, anyways, yeah. that's our couples. That is Castile and Poppy. Anything you guys want to add, you can add. And we will get to you guys soon with a recap on From Blood and Ash, the series. But we'd love for you to subscribe and like, and we will see you soon. We have lots of videos to film. <laughs> Bye.